In most IPM strategies, monitoring is uh, the basis for decision making. So it's not predetermined that all the biological control agents are going to work in the same way and it's not necessarily the case that insecticides are required. In some cases, uh, monitoring will say there's aphid problems but there's no caterpillar problems or it might say the exact opposite that there's uh, a problem with one particular pest requires action with a very selective insecticide. Many of the life stages of the, the insects that we're looking for are very small. And so when we're looking for eggs of diamondback moth in particular, they're often laid on the, the upper surface of the leaf in the veins and they just look like little yellow specks. But sometimes they can be multiples of eggs that are laid overlapping each other and so they can be egg clusters, not, not single eggs. And to check whether they're eggs or just bits of uh, pollen or other debris stuck on the leaf uh, is obviously important. So to do that, uh, I usually use a 10 times hand lens, so a small magnifying glass. When someone is monitoring a, a crop um, to make a decision on what action is required, the first thing is to look for the pests. We need to know, is there a pest problem? But the monitoring should also take into account whether there's any biological control agents present. And often the easiest way to assess that is by looking for the non-mobile stages. So the eggs in particular, we can tell whether they're hatched or not. If they're not hatched, then we can predict that in the days or the next week, there will be a population of predators to deal with whatever pest level we've found. So then you can make a decision are there enough beneficials to deal with this level of pests? If not, then some other action would be required. The predators of aphids, hoverflies and brown lacewings, they also lay their eggs and they typically glue them to the underside of the brassica leaves. Tiny little larvae hatch out, so brown lacewing larvae are often described as insect versions of crocodiles. They're, they're long and skinny and they've got a big pair of jaws at the, the front. So they, they prey on aphids. They will eat other things, but they, their preferred food is aphids. So one of, one of the major pests of uh, brassicas all over the world for, for many, many years has been cabbage white butterfly. Uh, it's very visible. It's obvious to, to people. And when the weather conditions are right, you can see clouds of these butterflies active, usually feeding on flowers or trying to find food. When the butterflies first emerge, they need some time before they are actually mature, and then they mate and lay eggs. The period from when they're first noticed as active butterflies to when there's eggs that are going to hatch could be uh, quite a time. So if an insecticide was applied, for example, as soon as butterflies were seen, it would probably be too early. Even when the eggs are laid, when they're freshly laid, they're very pale, and then they, they darken in colour from a yellow through to an orange colour before they hatch. So looking at the colour of the eggs, as well as the number of eggs, can allow the person doing the monitoring to predict when are there going to be caterpillars, and if the insecticide that might be used in this case is something that they have to eat, then we can target the very first, tiniest caterpillars that are going to be the easiest to kill. In brassica crops in general, and fodder brassicas in the same way, if caterpillars chew holes in the leaves, then there is obviously signs of feeding damage. But what is sometimes not recognised is that the caterpillar might chew a small hole and then either be killed or eaten, but that small hole will grow in size as the leaf grows. And so damage two or three weeks after the initial feeding damage was done can look far worse than it actually is and the pest problem could be already gone by that stage. As an entomologist I work in a, a very wide number of crops and we have to be able to recognise a huge number of insects both pest and beneficial. But in addition to the pest and beneficial insects there's also a lot of insects that are neither and so they're insects that are in the, in the crops, but they're not causing damage and they're not biocontrol agents. They're, they're just part of the ecosystem. So there's a lot of life in crops when 
broad spectrum insecticides aren't used. So it can seem overwhelming if someone wants to identify what am I looking at here, but in actual fact there's only a pretty small number of pests and a small number of beneficials and so distinguishing those from all of the others is all that's necessary. So it's quite possible for someone that's either growing or specialising in brassica crops to very quickly sort out which are the important insects to look at and which are not worth uh, looking at from a pest management point of view. When we're looking for pests and beneficials, we like to conduct regular monitoring, whatever the interval might be, whether it's weekly or two or three weekly intervals. And the point of that is to decide whatever action was taken and whatever level of biological control is there, is it keeping up with the pest levels? And so are pest numbers increasing despite the presence of beneficials? Or are pest numbers dropping and beneficial numbers increasing and so different decisions could be made. If, if it's a one spot sample, you don't know what was happening last week and you don't know what's happening next week, and so it's very difficult to make a decision just from a spot visit.